and, and our children singing every Sunday morning. And let's let our let's let our choir know how much we appreciate them singing their hearts out to us this morning, and ministering to us. And uh, I want to say thank you, Pastor, for giving me the opportunity to stand before this congregation today. If I preach here or anywhere, I always want to give honor to the pastor of the church. And I appreciate our wonderful pastor, appreciate his leadership. And, and um, let's just give him a, just a great big hand clap this morning. Round of applause. And we just thank God for what he's doing. And let me say this real quick. I want to say thank you to all of our volunteers that came out yesterday. We participated at the Heading Him um, Easter egg hunt. We had a great time. It rained on us off and on. But there was still a great turnout. We were able to invite people to church, invite them to our dinner next Sunday. We were, and, and, and we were able to spread some joy. Uh, we did face painting and everything, and it was just a wonderful day. And I appreciate all of our volunteers that came out and made that possible. And I'm just, I've been thinking about this lately. I just believe God has just given us wonderful opportunities to reach out to our community. And I believe a, a, a main reason for that is that because we have a lot of great volunteers here that are willing to serve. Because I believe God's going to give you opportunities if you're ready for them. Can somebody say amen? amen. And I believe we do. And, and we just I want to say a big thank you to all of you that serve and um, always volunteer for the different events that we have. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. And I'm glad, I'm glad for your uh, assistance and help every single time. God is good today. God is good. Let's stand this morning. Go to the book of Acts, chapter 18. I've been moving, been reading through the book of Acts, uh, just in my daily reading. And I came through this chapter the other day, and this, this, these passages just stuck out to me. And God began to talk to me about this. And then when Pastor uh, called me and, and asked me to stand before you today, God began to put this back on my heart. And I really feel like the Lord's going to help somebody here this morning, all of us here today. So we're going to the book of Acts, chapter 18, verse number 5. If you have it, say amen. amen. The Bible says, And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in his spirit. Somebody say press. Press. Pressed in his spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his remnant and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians hear and believed and were baptized. Go back to verse 5. It said that Paul was pressed in his spirit, so he really felt the pressing and the leading of the Lord really felt like this was the Lord's will. And so he testifies to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And I'm sure he expected a great result because he felt such a pressing in his spirit. But here's the response that he got. They opposed themselves and blasphemed. They, did, they rejected the message. What a disappointment. Can someone say amen? amen. What a disappointment. But I want to, so I want to preach to you this morning on this topic, a door in exchange for your disappointment. God will give you a door, an open door, another opportunity in exchange for your disappointment this morning. Are you going to help me preach today? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to ask our good pastor to lead us to the Lord in prayer. Let's all pray, please, for this preaching. seated this morning in the house of the Lord. I thank God. 
I'm sure all of us, we could raise probably both hands today and say, I, there's been times in my life that I have faced disappointments, that we've expected things were going to turn out one way to only see that it turned out in a, in a different way than we expected. Amen. Life is definitely full of disappointments, but it's also full of joys and, and great pleasures. Amen. And I thought about something about my, I have a, my oldest son, Levi. He is uh, 10 years old, and he's getting to be in that, that, that age where he gets embarrassed real easily. Amen. And uh, he does not want me to try to hold his hand or anything. I, mean, and I like messing with him when we go out in public and try to hold his hand walking. But he does not like that. He won't hug you in public. He will not do any of that. He don't like to be embarrassed. Now, my youngest son, he don't care. He, he'll do whatever. He, he'll look any way. He, if, he, if, he, if he's dressed crazy, it doesn't bother him. He's fine. But Levi gets embarrassed real easily. And so the other day at his school, they had pajama day. So I woke them up. I told Levi, I said, Levi, you have pajama day at school. You can go to school in your pajamas. He was like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, you can do it. So he gets, uh, he gets all dressed up in those fancy pajamas. And when he's heading out the door, the mean dad that I am, I had to mess with him a little bit. I said, well, Levi, I hope today is pajama day. <laughs> and you should have said you should have saw the look on his face, disappointed, upset, worried. He said, are you serious? I got to go change. I said, no, I said, I'm just messing with you. It is pajama day, all right, <laughs> amen. But he was disappointed. He was even worried, you know, and so life is like that. Sometimes we have just great expectations, and we think today is going to be an awesome day, and we just face at times just disappointment, and we're disappointed, and we're let down, amen. And we look at Paul here. Paul was a great man of God. He was an incredible individual. He's a mighty soldier for Jesus Christ. But Paul knew of the great successes as well as the failures. He knew of the great highlights in his life, but also knew what it was like to face disappointments. And leading up to where we read this morning, Paul had experienced so much Already, he cursed a sorcerer in Cyprus in Acts chapter 13. He even witnessed a crippled man be healed in Lystra in Acts chapter 14. He, in Acts chapter 16, he witnessed the baptism of Lydia. And then also in that same chapter, he was uh, in prison. And uh, God rescued Paul and Silas out of that prison, miraculously and caused a jailbreak, and he was able to come out of that. And he experienced so much, and he comes to this point now where he is on fire for the Lord. He is moving forward. He is a force to be reckoned with. And he comes and he preaches to the Corinthians. And in verse number 5, we read about how he was pressed in his spirit. That word press means to hold together, to compel, to constrain. He really felt the leading of the Lord. How many has ever felt that before? The leading of the Lord. You felt like it was God's will to do something. Amen. God, Paul knew that he was in the will of God. He knew that he was in the right place. He was there for the right time, and he had the right message. So you can only imagine what he was thinking when he stood up to preach to those Corinthians. He expected, I'm sure, a lot of great things. He expected great success that day, but he stands up and he preaches, and what he, the response that he receives is just a big disappointment. Can somebody say amen? amen. They, cho they chose to reject the message. They even blasphemed, which means that they, 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 they hated what he had to say. And I've told you all this to tell you that I told you all that to tell you this this morning. There's been probably times in your life, or there will be times in your life, where you try to do things for God, and you really felt the leading of the Lord to do those things, and even just living for God every day, trying to do the best that you can. You felt like it was the right thing to do, but you only face 
disappointment. And But I want to let you know this morning that if it happened to Paul, amen, it will happen to us. But if Paul was able to do and to overcome that, you can overcome it as well. We can't let the disappointments get the best of us this morning. I've come to preach to you today that you have to overcome the disappointments in your life. They're not meant to define who you are. You can be an overcomer this morning. Can somebody shout amen? Amen. He experienced all that. But, and we will as well. We will face disappointments. If you haven't already, you'll face them. There's been times in my life and in my ministry where I felt it. I felt the call of God. I felt the message. But it seemed like nothing happened. How many has ever testified to somebody, ever witnessed to somebody? You had great expectations. You felt the pressing in your spirit. But they chose to reject it. How many has prayed the prayer? You, you felt that individual in your heart and you prayed for that individual, but you saw nothing happen. Come on, somebody help me right here. I mean, I mean, there's so many things that we could talk about today. And you, I'm, I'm talking about our spiritual life this morning, what we're trying to do for God every single day, even living for Him. How many has ever felt like, and when I, I've done everything I'm supposed to do, I prayed, I, I've read my Bible, I've gone to church, I've paid my tithes, but it seems like I can't get ahead anywhere. It seems like I can't gain any traction at all. It just seems like bad thing happens, bad thing happens, one after another. Come on. How many's ever felt like that before? I want to let you know this morning, amen, that God hasn't forgot about you and that God still cares about you. And yes, we will face disappointments, but God, through his help, will help us to overcome and be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And it's all about how you respond. And so here, here's, here are three questions real quick that comes to your mind when you're doing everything you know to do for God, when you're trying to work for Him, and you receive a disappointment. Three questions come to your mind, and if the devil would, ha would have his way, he would want you to dwell on these questions and keep you questioning, keep you questioning. Come on. And so here they are. First one is, here's the first question a lot of people will ask themselves this. Was it really the will of God? When you're faced with a disappointment, you begin to question, was it really God that I felt that pressing? Was it really God or was it just me? Was it really the will of God? Was this really a God thing? Come on, somebody, help me right here. Was it really that? But I want to let you know this morning that even though it's a, you may have faced a disappointment, amen, that doesn't mean that it's not the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It could still mean it was God. It is a, still a God thing. Jesus even told his disciples. He even warned his disciples when he sent them out. He said, when you come to a city and they choose to reject the message, you just shake off the dust of your feet and move on. He let them know hey, not everybody's going to accept it, but you're still in the will of God. I said not everybody is going to accept it, but you are still in the will of God. Don't question that it was God. Yes, it is God and still will be. You can even think about our spiritual life. It's the will of God that all men and women and children ought be saved. But we still go through trials, don't we? Yeah, We still go through trials. Doesn't mean that we're out of the will of God. No, sir. No, ma'am. We're not out of the will of God. It is the will of God for all of us to be saved. And just because I receive a trial, that doesn't mean I'm out of the will of God. I just want to let somebody know that. Amen. Just because you're going through a hard season right now doesn't mean that you're out of the will of God. You could be right there in it. God it might be trying to teach you something. God may try to work something out in your life. He's trying to make you stronger. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I want to let you know today, amen, that you should never, ever waste the failures in your life. Thank God. The next question we ask ourselves, was it my fault? What is wrong with me? We start questioning ourselves. We tend to think that we messed up, that we're not able, that we must not be in the favor of the Lord. I'm going to let you know, last year, 2022, was one of the toughest years for me. I received trials in that year, and it seems like nothing was going right. And you can easily, when everything's going wrong, you can say, man, I must be out of the favor of the Lord. I'm talking to somebody today. What's wrong with me? But that's not what it is. God is doing a work. And he doesn't guarantee success after success after success. Sometimes we have to go through trials. But I'm glad God is a God of restoration. And I want to say, even, la even though last year was a rough year, this year is a whole lot better. Thank God. He doesn't leave you in the hard season. He'll restore unto you. Hallelujah. When you've been down and discouraged and depressed, I want to let you know that my God is a God of restoration, and he'll restore unto you the joy of your salvation. Somebody give him praise in this house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Romans 8, 28 says this, And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. He said all things. That means the good and the bad work together for the good. That word good means beneficial. I want to let you know that God can work out something good, something beneficial for you. He can take your failures and work something good in your life. Uh, sometimes the disappointments are meant to strengthen us and help our character today. Glory to God. He's going to work it out for your good. It's going to be beneficial to you. The storm that you may be in, God's working something good. The failures that you had, God is going to work something good out of that. And then the third question, he said, is, then what is the purpose in trying again? Why should I even try? I put forth this effort. I gave all this energy. I gave my time. But I just face a disappointment. Why should I even try again? These are the questions that come in our mind. I want to let you know this morning that if the devil can get you on this question and can keep you on this question, then you, there's going to be days that go by that you do not try. And the more that you do not try, the colder you're going to get. On. <laughs> the colder you're going to get. And then you're going to get to the point to say, this is not worth doing any longer. I want to tell you today, there's a purpose in trying this morning. I said, there's a purpose in trying this morning, and you just need to hope, and you need the faith again to see that. You need to shout hallelujah. You need to shake yourself off this morning. You need to say, hey, I'm going to forget about those things which are behind, and I'm going to reach forward unto those things which are before, because I, hallelujah, there's a prize that's waiting for you and I. So there is a reason for trying today. There's a heaven to gain. There's a heaven one day that we can make it to. I've got to keep on trying. How about you this morning? <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord this morning. I got to keep on trying. I got to keep on trying. I got to forget about those things. Yeah, 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 it didn't turn out like I wanted to turn out. But I can't dwell on it. 
I can't go back. I can't correct those things. I just got to move forward. God, help me to move. Come on. Somebody turn to your neighbor. Tell them, move forward. Turn to your other neighbor. Tell them, move forward. Hallelujah. Come on, move forward today. How many of you are moving forward this morning? Come on, I, I need more participation. How many of you are moving forward this morning? I'm going forward with the Lord. Devil, get thee behind me. I'm going forward with the Lord. Lord, take my hand and lead me on. Lead me forward. Woo, praise God. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. I feel like some people are going to move forward today. I said, I feel like some more people are going to move forward today. Thank you, Lord. He was faced with this disappointment, Paul was. I preached. I felt the pressing. But they chose to reject it. But here's how Paul responded. He shook his remnant, his outer remnant. He shook it off and said unto them, Your blood be upon your heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. You know what he was saying? He said, I, I'm, I choose to not let my disappointment define who I am, but I'm going to look for that open door because I believe God will give me an open door, another opportunity in exchange for my disappointment. I've come to tell you this morning that my God is able to give you another opportunity. He's able to open up another door if you will just give him your disappointment. It's an exchange. You have to give it in order to receive. And some of you holding on to that disappointment, you need to say, huh, I'm going to shake it off. I'm going to shake it off. And I'm going to give it to the Lord. And in return, I'm going to receive another opportunity. I'm going to receive another opportunity to prove myself. I'm going to receive another opportunity to witness. I'm going to receive another opportunity to teach and to preach and to let others know that there's a Savior that can wash them and cleanse them of all their sins. Paul said, I'm going to go. You choose to reject it, but I'm going to go unto the Gentiles. I'm not going to hang around with my disappointment. I'm going to walk through that open door. Thank you, Lord. Thank God he'll give you another opportunity. So here's what we need to do. Three things. I'm going to get out of the way. Here's three things that we must do then. If we're going to go from disappointment to walking through that open door, first of all, don't retire. <laughs> now, now, I'm not talking about the natural. Don't retire. Don't quit. Don't give up. In other words, make yourself available. Make yourself available. Paul said, I'm going to shake it off, and I'm going to make myself available. Come on, somebody, help me right here. How do you do this? How can I do this, preacher? You don't know the disappointment that I face. Seems like my life is full of disappointments, and I'm overwhelmed by them. You got to do what Peter tells, you, tells us to do. Casting all your care upon him. For he careth for us. You got to cast all your care. That means you take that disappointment. You, you take off that disappointment. You shake it off. Take that off and give it. Cast it. I mean, I'm talking about cast. I'm not talking about, man, just, just, just giving it right, just trying to be all proper about it. No, I'm talking about you're sick of it. I'm not talking about, let me just put it right here nicely. 
I'm talking about you're sick of it. And you're saying, I'm going to cast it on to the Lord. I'm done with it. I'm tired of it. And I'm not going to hang on to it any longer. I'm tired of it. And I'm going to cast it on to the Lord. Paul said, I'm sick of it. I'm going to cast. How many of you are sick and tired of that disappointment? You're sick and tired of that discouragement. It's time to cast it on to the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody, oh, God, give us, help us today. I'm going to cast it on to the Lord this morning. Elijah, he was a man, the Bible says, that was subject to like passions as we are. He faced what we face. He was a mighty prophet, mighty man of God. But you do also find Elijah hiding in a cave somewhere, discouraged, disappointed. But I'm so thankful that God called him out of the cave. And we're, we're not called to be cave dwellers. We're not called to stay there. But you know what Paul had to do? He had to wrap that mantle around his head. And he had to just walk out by faith and trust in the Lord. And I want to tell somebody this morning, you just need to wrap, you just need to wrap yourself in God today. Say, I want to be found in him. Not my own righteousness, but his. I want to be found. How many wants to be hid today in the Lord? How many needs God to just wrap you up this morning? Wrap my mind. Wrap my heart. Wrap my entire being. Lord, wrap me up this morning. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I can be an overcomer. Second thing you need to do is don't refrain. You need to look for that open door. The amazing thing here was Paul did not have to look very far. He, he decides to go into the Gentiles. And he finds this house right there. Right there next to the synagogue. And a man there has this house. He is a Christian. He is a believer. His name is Justice. And so he goes into this house. What a wonderful opportunity. Right there next to the synagogue. Amen. You see what God does? God will just take, I mean, it's just amazing how God will bless you with an open door that is just so wonderful. And so you have to look for it. You have to search it out. Matthew 7 and 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. How many of you are looking for that opportunity? You have to look for it. You have to search it out. You can't just, just refrain yourself. You can't just hide away somewhere. You have to look, search it. I thought about how we even came to Capital City, how we even ended up here. We, we faced a disappointment where we were at, my wife and I, church that we were at. Good people, nothing wrong with them. I mean, everything's good. Nothing. I don't have anything, anything against them. But we had expectations, and they just did not. We just received a disappointment. And so from there, we were searching, searching. Searching for the next opportunity. Where can I go? Where can I be of service? Where can I have the opportunity to really work for the Lord? And the searching, the looking, ended up right here. Pastor Harry, my brother-in-law, my good friend, my brother, he offered us to be the youth pastor here at Capital City. And that was the opportunity. That was the open door. Yes, I was disappointed. Yes, I was hurt. But God gave me an open door in exchange. And I am so thankful. And thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. Because we almost, almost five years later, four and a half, almost five years later, we love being at Capital City Church of God. 
We love this church. And I am so thankful for the opportunity to serve right here. And I thank God for that. But if I didn't look, if I didn't search for it, would it even happen? Are you searching this morning? Some of you probably know this from experience. Even in the natural, even in, in, in your, on your, maybe that job, that prize job that you have right now, you were searching for something and God blessed you. You got to search. You got to look for it. That's what Paul did. And then lastly, you have to act on the opportunity. Do not reject it. God had opened the door for Paul to minister. And God opened up the door for Paul to minister to the ruler of the synagogue. What an awesome opportunity. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord. And many Corinthians believed and were baptized. Do you realize this morning that who knows if they would have came, uh, come to Christ if it had not been for Paul looking for that opportunity. And he acted on it. Are you going to act on the opportunity this morning? Or are you going to say, that's my, op that's my opportunity? That's my open door? How many of you are going to walk right through it? Don't question yourself. Don't question God this morning. Don't question the purpose. If God gives you an opportunity, can I tell you this morning, God's going to help you. I say God's going to help you. He's going to help you work right there. He's going to help you be an overcomer right there. He's going to help you do what he has called you to do. If God calls you, he'll, he'll, he will equip you. Hallelujah. And so here's what you need to do. Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto, unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Hallelujah. Just do it with all your might and all your heart. Hallelujah. Don't question you just say this is my opportunity and I'm going to work because I have the Lord on my side how many believe the Lord is on your side this morning I thought about uh, Jacob at the end of Genesis 45 he thought his son Joseph had died but they come and they told him that Joseph was alive. And he chose not to believe it at first. But the Bible says that when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. And Israel said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. See, his name changed because he started leaning on the spirit. He said, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm an old age here. But I see those wagons. I know Joseph's alive. And I'm going to act on this opportunity. I'm not going to let it slip on by. Because I can sit here all day long and I can question my strength. I can question my ability to make the trip. But he said, no, I will go and see him before I die. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to let you know, act on the opportunity. Act on the opportunity. How many could just point a finger in your chest here today and say, I can do all things through Christ this morning. Come on, church. I can do, I'm, I'm, I'm closing. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Come on, you got to believe it this morning. I'm talking about acting on that opportunity. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Hallelujah. I can't do it by myself. I can't do it leaning on myself. But I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I don't want to let the opportunity slip on by. I want to embrace it and claim it as mine. Glory. Stand to your feet this morning. Sister Leah, come on. He'll give you a door in exchange 
for your disappointment this morning. Verse 9 and 10, I like these scriptures. Let me read them in Acts chapter 18. After this was done, after he saw the great success here, the Bible says, Then spoke the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak. Hold not thy peace, for I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. It's amazing how God, I just love the Lord this morning. It's amazing how God will just confirm things. And the Bible says that he is the author and the what? Finisher of our faith. He completes it. He completes the work. And he confirmed with Paul that night, I know you came off a big disappointment. But I want you to keep the faith alive. Keep the hope alive. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm the author and the finisher of your faith. And I just want to encourage you this morning, church. He will complete things in your life. He will confirm. He will help you today. Don't let the discouragement and the disappointment get the best of you today. Give it to the Lord. And he'll give you an opportunity. He'll give you an open door to walk through so you can keep working for him today. If you want to do something for God, he'll, he'll put you to work. I believe it. If you want more of God, he's going to give you more. I believe it. It's just what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Oh, every head bowed, every eyes closed. My heavenly Father, I thank you. For, for helping us today to preach your word. I hope I've done an adequate job today to preach my heart and to give to this congregation what you've laid on my heart. I pray, God, now at this moment, take this message. Let it be applied to everyone here today. And God, help us to grow from it this morning. Touch this altar service. We're getting ready to pray. I pray, God, that you would move around these altars here this morning. God, let there be dis discouragement and disappointments lay down or cast on you today and God give in exchange an open opportunity an open door God work in everyone's life here this morning in Jesus name amen I, I want to invite you to come and to pray this morning let's fill these altars this morning church pray around these altars to pray at your seat but I want to encourage you to give your disappointment to God this morning so he can give you an open door he can give you another opportunity today hallelujah come on let's just give it to God what do you have to give to him this morning because I believe if you give it to him he'll give you something in return come on church let's really cry out to him today and get what we need receive what we need here in this house this morning